Good afternoon all, it is your boy Nero here and it's my pleasure to welcome you to yet more Euro 2020 content. This time I'm bringing you the inaugural Euro 2020 playthrough on a video game world championships division. And I know the situation ladies and gentlemen, the Euros have started, you've just watched Turkey get stuffed more than your average Christmas dinner and you're excited, you're gassed, you want to play through the Euros yourself. But FIFA shafted it. They don't have half the teams that are actually in the tournament. They're losing more rights than a convicted criminal these days. And so you need an alternative. That is where Pro Evolution Soccer 2021, but it's not actually a new game, it's just an update from 2020, comes in. This is a game where you can score an absolute screamer with your main striker, and then merely 23 seconds later, get him sent off for manslaughter. We've got the official Euro 2020 game mode in this game. So today I'm going to play through as England and see whether football really and truly is coming home. If you're going to enjoy the video, slap a like on it and subscribe if you're new to the channel. As you can see here in the background, all the teams are fully licensed with their full kits and their full squads as well. Even North Macedonia. All the groups are realistic as well. Some of the squads are like a little bit inaccurate, but in terms of starting 11s, it's pretty much the usual. All the groups are fully seeded and done properly as well. So Group A has got Italy, Turkey, Wales, and Switzerland in, etc, etc. And you can literally just sit down, play through the game mode, and it'll simulate the tournament tree as it should do. And that means our first game of the tournament is against Croatia in the group stages. A lot of people saying it'll be our most difficult game. I don't see personally why. I don't know why everyone's gassing it up so much. Inspirational from Jaden Sancho. Just to clarify, by the way, I'm not playing this game. I'm letting the AI kind of do its thing. Uh, it was a pretty quiet first half. Croatia there with a unreal strike. Great save from Pickford. Modric now coming forward, cutting in from the left-hand side and forcing yet another save out of the England goalkeeper. But now into the 89th minute, ball played into Harry Kane and it's a smash and grab victory for England. The first game of Euro 2020 is ending in an England victory. Victory. I'm telling you now, football is coming home. Harry Kane then with a 90th minute, last minute winner, I believe so, by Jadon Sancho there. He plays the ball into feet. Kane then turns and puts it in at the near post. Croatia devastated. They're defeated in the first game of the group stages. And it's three points on the board for Harry Kane and for England, which leads us nicely into our second game of the group stages against Scotland. Their tap water might be nicer than ours, but I refuse to lose to a team that has Oliver Burke up front. So hopefully this is a pretty simple victory for England for the three Lions, especially after beating arguably the best team in this group. Now Sterling's coming down at this left-hand side. He's got help from Ben Chilwell, who launched the ball in towards Kane. Was there really any need, big man? Like, I know you gassed after the last goal, but like... It's a bright start, though, for England. Jaden Sancho on the ball, switching it to Sterling. Running behind here from Kane. It's a deflected ball through, but Harry Kane doesn't care as he scores his second of the tournament. Let's go! He punches the air. He's loving life. Lovely little finish. Keeper probably could have chosen a better time to adjust his gloves, really. But a solid first half here for England. The ball is played through. Sterling's beaten the offside trap. Can he make it too? Dear mother of God, man. I mean, at least this game is realistic with Raheem Sterling's finishing ability. But that is it. It's a 1-0 victory for a second game in a row. This is very England behavior, isn't it? We are officially through with that result into the knockout rounds of the tournament with a game to spare here against the Czech Republic. Now, given we've arrived at a game here that doesn't matter, I thought I'd take this opportunity to say this video isn't actually, it's not sponsored. I know what you thought I was going to say there, but listen, Konami, if you're watching, innit, car, I don't play FIFA anymore, so if you just want to hit me up and just sort me out with this one instead. Whilst I was begging it, chances came and gone, but the, what, the Trent Alexander-Arnold, what, what is his face in this game? Chances came and went, the game ended goalless and nil-nil, which saw the Czech Republic qualify from our group as well. Italy and Switzerland going through in Group A with Wales and Turkey going out. Denmark finished top of Group B and went through with Belgium. Uh, Austria and the Netherlands also going through 
in Group C. Obviously, there's third place teams as well that can go through, so I'll show you those. You've seen Group D. Group E saw so Sweden win the group out of Spain, and Germany and France going through. I believe Portugal go through as a best third place team there, which means in the round of 16, we face... Oh, fucking hell, that's time. Right. We're in the mud. I know football's meant to be coming up a minute. I don't think we're going to be... We're playing France in the round of 16. Are you mental? Look, we might as well get it over and done with. France are going to steamroll us. We're going to go out disappointingly again. Wait, hang on. Is that is that Jaden Sancho nodding the ball into the bottom corner? France are left bemused. England fans, probably equally so, given we're actually beating a big team here. I don't mean to get ahead of myself here, but there is actually genuinely the possibility that we are the greatest team in world for it's 1-1. Never mind. Yeah, don't. It isn't. It was, it was fun while it lasted. Killian and Mbappe's equalized. Look, listen, who's this done at the side of the pitch? Killian, you've equalized against England. It's not that much of a big deal. It's a wonderful goal, though, from Killian Mbappe, who turns his defender and slams the ball home. And now we have all the work to do once again, but Chilwell puts the ball in. Sancho should have had his second goal of the game, but misses Kane forces the save out of Mondanda, who I can only assume is replacing an injured Lloris. Raheem Sterling! Misses the sitter as well. How many chances are we going to have? Well, no more in normal time. Normal regulation time. This game is going to extra time. We've got another half an hour of this heartache. Harry Kane, though, has been played through behind France's defense in the 109th minute. And he's given us the lead again. Can you believe it, ladies and gentlemen? England are 10 minutes away from knocking out the world champions. And we do hold on. I don't mean to cause alarm, but football is coming home. We've beaten France 2-1. We've beaten the world champions 2-1. The favourites for the tournament 2-1. Harry Kane has done it again. It's another winning goal from him. So this is how it leaves the tournament tree. The usual suspects like Spain, Italy and Germany. But some surprising faces as well. The likes of Austria, Denmark and Sweden still left in this competition now at the quarterfinal stage. It's the latter of those that we're going to face in the final eight here. Zlatan Ibrahimovic of Sweden. Obviously he's injured in real life but he's still in the squad in this game because who else is going to take his place? Half an hour has flown by here and England are coming forward with Ben Chilwell putting the ball to the back stick and Jadon Sancho is there again. It's back-to-back -back goals for the Borussia Dortmund winger. He gives England the lead. I'm getting into this, boys, because I can't quite believe it. But we actually might do the business here. Sancho's now set up Raheem Sterling and there's daylight. Boys! We're actually quite good at football in this game. 2-0 up here, and Sweden are starting to fall apart. It's a third from Declan Rice on the turn. He makes it 3-0 on the 62nd minute. And it is now domination as the ball is swung in again with 15 to go. And Raheem Sterling with a bit of a swinger half volleys the ball in. England players fall to the floor. Sweden players do as well, but for different reasons. England progressing to the semi-finals of the Euros. And it's going to get played at Wembley. Home advantage, but difficult opposition. Axel Witzel is going to lead out a Belgian side that has swept aside everybody. And I'll be honest with you, lads. Nothing happened in the first 80 minutes, so I'm not going to show you anything because you're just going to get bored. There's no point. But what has happened here is a breakaway for England. Harry Kane has got support. It comes in the form of Jadon Sancho. A chance here for England to reach the final, but it's wide. I think it's a save from Courtois. Unbelievable scenes. Is that the chance gone? Well, the ball's been played through to Harry Kane and it might not be over yet. It's another last minute winner from the captain. Harry Kane has sent England into rapture and into the Euro 2020 final with a last minute goal here against Belgium. 
The golden generation has been thwarted again. Vertonghen, he hasn't got another tournament left in him. He's 46 years old. England in front of a packed home stadium are through to the final. And we've got to play Germany. Are you taking the piss? This has already been hard enough as it is. And now we've got to face the old enemy with the likes of Gnabry, Sane, Havertz, Gross, Kimmich, Werner. Maybe we'll be all right after all, actually, thinking about about it. So it all comes down to this. At Wembley once more, is football truly coming home? I mean, technically, it's already home now. If we just stole the trophy, I don't think anyone's noticing. You get me? So, nine minutes in here in England are coming forward. Harry Kane with support. Raheem Sterling is there. He sees the opening, but he drags the shot marginally wide. And as you'd expect in a major European final, it's been a pretty cagey affair from the get-go. Neither side trying to lose the game in the first 45 minutes. I mean, they're not trying to lose it in the second 45 minutes either, theoretically. But with just 10 minutes to go now, it's been a really quiet game. But England are bringing the ball forward here with Jaden Sancho down the right hand side. He cuts in. Harry Kane is there on the spin. Harry Kane has scored yet again. And this time, instead of just taking England to the final, he might have taken England to victory in the final. Give this man a knighthood, Sir Haroldini O'Keefe. Kane. This is absolutely unbelievable. What a tournament Harry has had. And seemingly that is going to be enough for England to bring home their first international tournament trophy since 1966. It's another 1-0. This is Gareth Southgate ball to a tee. We've played eight centre-backs and we've won the whole flipping tournament. Football is home. England have won Euro 2020 on Pro Evolution Soccer 2021. Just want to clarify, that has actually happened. So if you're commenting about it, it hasn't happened necessarily in real life. But it's going to, all right, in the future. Yep, the crystal ball is out. England are your Euro 2020 champions. I can't actually believe We've beaten France, we've beaten Belgium, and we've beaten Germany on the way to this trophy. Harry Kane lifts it up. He deserves it after all the goals he scored. But will this be the actual future of the tournament? Let me know down in the comments section below. Who do you reckon's winning it, if not England? If you enjoyed this adventure, then feel free to slap a like on the video. And of course, subscribe if you're new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye.